What's going on guys, it's Nira from UK Mobile Review. We're here at Huawei's MWC 2014 stand and next to me is James Powell, a good friend of mine from Huawei, who's the UK and Ireland product director for Huawei. We're just gonna have a quick word with James about the new products they announced yesterday and then we're about where, where we see Huawei in the next 12 months. Special thanks to Sennheiser for lending us the EW100 and ME2 microphones and Sony for lending us the RX100 Mark II camera for our Mobile World Congress coverage. Check out the links in the description below. So let's start off with the tablets we announced yet. Yeah, so yesterday we announced two media pads, an eight inch multimedia device, which is a full HD, got surround sound, dual speakers on the front, incredibly powerful, it's CAP4 LTE, which means you could download at 150 megabits a second. You can, um, uh, it's got a 1.6 quad core processor, so it's incredibly powerful, superb entertainment device. Will work for entertainment. Will work for uh, we'll work just general work. General working. It's got an office solution built in as well. Perfect commuters device built for that UK UK uh, consumer market. I mean, we've all been on we've all been on trains in the tubes in London. And let's be honest, it takes the best of time even when there aren't delays. So it looks like the media pad's probably one of the best devices if you are going to be stuck on the train when the tube and you know when they decide to go on strike every other week. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, the, the thing about Cap4 LTE is it means you can download a, a movie, a full-length movie, at 150 megabits a second. You'd be able to download that whole movie in a minute. So it's absolute lightning speed. This is what tablets are going to be about. Tablets so far have been the great giant screens for apps, very good devices, but now they're really going to start to come into their own. And that's, that's, this is the first of those. We also announced yesterday a product called the X1, which is a more compact device. It's a 7-inch full HD device. Uh, which is because it's the thinnest in the world. It's just 7.19 millimeters thick. It's uh, it's got an incredibly narrow bezel, just 2.9 millimeters surround the screen to the edge of the device. So you get something that will show you show you shortly that will fit very neatly in a pocket here, neatly in your jeans pocket. But because it's just so portable, you get a really different user scenario. So we're able to put huge cameras into this. A 13 megapixel, megapixel main camera. It'll be a brilliant device to take to any social event, whatever it might be. But it's also got a five megapixel front facing camera. And the selfies world is here and now, it's here for everybody. In the UK, it's being t taken up faster than almost any other market in the world. You don't have to be, you don't have to be Miley Cyrus to want to take pictures of yourself. You don't have to be have to be Justin Bieber to want to share it with everybody. For the UK consumer here and now, that's what 4G is about. 4G is very much about um, entertainment on one side, but also being able to upload all the things that you're doing on the other side. You don't need to be uh, bragging necessarily. This is about sharing everything that you do. And I mean, what we saw yesterday is there's no doubt that Huawei's consumer focus going forward is all about 4G LTE. As one of the world's most advanced companies when it comes to building these networks, a lot of you may not know, especially with the people watching this video and the visitors on the site, Huawei are instrumental in building the world's most advanced networks. In fact, the 300 megabits EE network that we mentioned in Tech Hub in Shoreditch in East London was actually, the LTE advanced network was actually built using Huawei technology. And as we saw yesterday, in previous years, it's always been Huawei make it possible, but this year there's a lot of 4G branding. Another another product for the 4G is the mid-range G6. Yeah, well, last year we announced a product called the P6. I've got I've got one of them here, and one of the strengths of this device, or the unique points, it's still uh, it was the the, um, the thinnest smartphone in the world, and that's okay. That's a nice engineering achievement, but it's what the product could do was pretty awesome. A huge camera, huge camera on the front, huge camera on the on the on the back. 5 megapixel on the front in particular, which like, that was ahead there ahead of the selfie kind of uh, wave that we've seen in the last few months. So uh, it's been fantastic for us. The one, I guess, issue, if you look at it from a UK perspective is concerned, is it was 3G. And um, we are very much, as you say, we're a 4G network, a 4G network builder of par, par excellence. We've done 110 networks around the world all major financial centers of the world. It's a, it's a juggernaut that's actually working here and now. And what we, I guess the, the downside of the P6 was that it didn't take advantage of that. So what we've announced yesterday is a product called the G6. The G6 adds 4G. It's slightly, it's slightly, slightly um, uh, thicker, if you like. That's, 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 the, that's, the, that's the part of, being, of adding all the 4G into the product. 
But we, what we haven't done is compromise it. This is not a mini. This is very much a product that's built for the, for, uh, specifically, and it's a part of the project is driven out of Europe in the first place for the youth that have bought contract phones, 15, 20 pounds a month for the last three or four years. They've been into social networking. They've been into, um, uh, been the, like, at the leading edge of, um, of smartphones, but not necessarily had the budget. The G6 that we've announced yesterday will be still 5 megapixel on the front. It'll still be 8, meg 8 megapixel on the back. It'll still have a huge battery. This thing will run and run. The whole purpose being, if I'm young or young at heart, whatever it might be, I've got something that I can share all my, uh, all my pictures, take great pictures in the first place, beautify myself before I put it on the screen. Everything there. It's a For my money, I think it's the best thing we launch. Well, I'm, I'm very biased and I'm looking at it from a UK, UK consumer perspective and an affordability perspective especially. I mean, at the, at the case of 15, 20 pounds a month, this G6 definitely packs a lot of punch and a lot of power for, the, for a very, very low cost. A lot of you may have seen the uh, rather interesting article I put up about the B6 and its um, beauty level, which to be honest, didn't do a lot of good with this face. But nonetheless, it's a great feature that a lot of people who take selfies, and we all know you guys do, if you're afraid to admit it, it's because you take them and you don't really like sharing them. But everyone likes to take the odd selfie picture here and there. The G6 comes with all of that, but brings the 4G capability. So it means not only is it as easy to take those selfies, but it's a lot quicker to share them, which means you're going to be taking a lot more selfies and you get a lot more likes a lot more faster. Absolutely. And if you, I think for anybody who's been in what would, was effectively the first generation of smartphones where they were powerful enough, but the cameras weren't brilliant, but they've still been uh, the UK, the, the, the youth and the young at heart in the UK have been pretty prolific with it. This is now going to be extremely affordable. The price we announced yesterday, and we're very cagey about pricing generally, but the price that we announced yesterday was 249 euros, which you, know, you do, the, do, the, uh, do, do the exchange rates, it comes into around 200-ish pounds. I think my message to anybody watching this is just watch this space as to how aggressive that can be or will be, because this is going to be a product that uh, we expect our partners to drive very, very hard. On the subject of partners, you obviously look at the fact that network subsidies, guys, if you say it does come in at around about the £200, £220 mark, network subsidies in the UK will drive that down. And I agree with James here, anything below that and you're looking at a lot of value for money. <coughs> you okay? You can edit that, it's fine. Surviving. Yeah. Surviving, just about, wow. <laughs> However, that's not all that Huawei announced yesterday. And it was actually quite surprising. Yesterday's big announcement, one that's very interesting to me, you probably watched my uh, Galaxy Gear smartwatch review, and wearables is the subject of MWC 2014, was the TalkBand B1, which is their wearable device. Now I'm gonna let James go into that, but I will tell you this now, although it only works with Huawei smartphones now, they've already promised that with an update, it's gonna work on any Android device running 2.3 gingerbread or above, and any iOS device running iOS 5 or later. That means you guys who have got iPhones and are crying out for a smartwatch, you might as well pick up the B1 because it's the one that's promising to work with your device. Absolutely, so we're, we're, this is very much the beginning of a, of a series of announcements around uh, wearables. This particular product uh, has a number of USPs. All wearables seem to be able to track your paces, tell you how many cal calories you burn, all that sort of stuff. Take it as read, that's part of this product. What's unique about it, and again, we'll show you show you very shortly, is that um, the, uh, the the B1 uh, will tell you who's calling, will tell you what's going on, but you can press a button and pop out the screen, and the screen itself is is the front of what's a uh, a very neat and uh, petite uh, Bluetooth headset. So that Bluetooth headset means you take your calls, your device, your your handset, or your or your tablet can stay in your bag, out of sight, if you've got concerns about that sort of thing, but it also makes it much more convenient, makes it much better, much better, better calling. So um, it's, a, it's an innovative device in that respect. From a talk time perspective, it will last around about six hours, but from a standby time perspective, it will take about, um, it, it could take as much as two weeks. So it's a hugely powerful device. One of the things that Huawei absolutely stands for, when you're building networks, you become very proficient at power, at power management. And our battery, power, our battery uh, technology is pretty phenomenal. It's designed 
uh, to perform very well with the devices. It's designed to optimize to work with the networks. That's the root of our original original kind of whole wealth of knowledge. So you take those they take those lessons and put it into a wearable. We're, we're going in with some very strong USPs from the start. Now, when you come to charge it. It's what's also very neat about it is just you plug in the end of the wearable at the end of the uh, end of the device. Uh, it just plugs it plugs instantly into um, into a USB port and away you go. You've got the charge and it'll take a couple of hours to charge it and you're back you're back back running again. From someone who uses the Samsung Galaxy again, sorry James, I'm not trying to make comparisons, but to be honest, I've got my gear here and when I'm in the car trying to make a phone call, it's like this. And if you're trying to change a gear stick, turn the wheel. It can be quite quiet, and I mean, I, we had a quick play with the B1 yesterday. And the most innovative and interesting part for myself as a user is the fact that we can take the Bluetooth headset out. So you've gone from a smartwatch where you just pop the headset out, put it in your ear, and all of a sudden you've got a Bluetooth headset. And the fact it runs on micro USB, no need for additional ports to charge, no docking cradle systems, any micro USB cable will work. This is what makes the B1 probably one of the most interesting wearables at MWC 2014. Now. It's not all about devices, because I've also got James here, because I want to talk to him about Huawei in the UK. As the product director for the UK and Ireland, I want to discuss where we see Huawei and say where we are now and where we see them at the end of this year and onwards. So um, we, we are a, a, a very much an, an early stage of our growth. We've, got, we've, we've uh, seen our brand recognition ri rise threefold in the last 12 months. We've got uh, a lot of engineering that you're seeing coming through today where our our product development is is phenomenal, and I've uh, had the privilege today of seeing some of the stuff for 2015, really early stages. And Anything you want to share with us? Uh, I'm afraid not, not today, but a uh, good try, definitely a good try. But we, but there's there's a lot coming through, so we are in a position where growth is growth is absolutely um, absolutely inevitable. It's just a question of of, of, of at what pace and and where that's going to be. From a branding perspective, I think you may have seen our sponsorship with. Our branding perspective, you may have seen our sponsorship with Arsenal, blatant. Oh, no. um, so, uh, uh, which is part of a of a of a, of a, a, a right across Europe, a lot of uh, sports sponsorship. We've got a, a sponsorship in, sponsorship in place with AC Milan, with Borussia Dortmund, with Arsenal. There's lots of activity happening there. If you go back to last summer, we had our first major sporting sponsorship arrangements with where we sponsored the World Triathlon final and took over London with Huawei branding. And there's, there's a lot of this coming through, so I'm not in a position to reveal the full story. But what you would have seen yesterday, and you'll be able to see online now if you Google it, you'll find a lot of, um, of G6 uh, marketing activity, and you get a feel for what's coming. This is um, very much a, a, a going to become a much more marketing-driven organisation. But the beauty of this, when you're coming into an organisation at this stage, is if you've got the engineering right and you've got the products in a good position and your pricing is strong, you're most of the way there. But the branding, the beauty of uh, being a, a UK-based organisation is the best marketing agencies in the world are based in London. And we are in a position to be able to work with whoever, whoever is, is right for us and it's right for them. And these guys are all looking to be, uh, to be looking to build global Chinese brands. The prize for them to, to, to do that and be part of that is obviously extremely big. So we, we go in with a, with a great understanding between ourselves of what we can achieve together. And that sounds very, um, uh, I, guess, I guess inevitably it's going to sound corporate. It might sound a little bit too, um, too heavenly, I'm not sure. But the, the reality is we're in a really, really strong position. And we should expect to see the branding grow very, very be, be much wider presence. So if you go into car phone warehouse stores, for example, now, you'll see well, I can't give you the exact number because that's commercially sensitive to both parties, but dedicated areas in those stores. You'll see, uh, you go into any uh, network store or retail store, you'll see a lot of different Huawei products. We haven't spoken as much about the mobile broadband yet, but there's, there's, there's lots of things there. So our brand presence is growing dramatically, and I think you should see, uh, you know, we, we, we grew 100% last year. I'd be very surprised if we do less than 100% this year. So just very quickly, we're going to talk to James about the new Huawei E5786, the uh, LTE Cat 6 modem. If you're not sure, LTE Cat 6 offers 300 megabits a second download and 100 megabits a second upload, which is double the speed of download and uh, double the speed of upload. So it's a it's a huge huge step forward. See, the modem isn't all about the download. I mean, don't get me wrong, 300 megabits per second. If you just seen my tweet from the from the MWC press area you'll know that's roughly the speed I'm getting on Ethernet. So to have that on the go 
and remember that EE is trialing a network and they've already got it in Shoreditch for the Tech Hub, it's very good. However, it's more than that. If I'm not mistaken, it's a 3,000 milliamp battery, isn't it? It's a 3,000 milliamp hour battery, which means that you could uh, run continuous usage for 10 hours. Uh, it's also, it's an incredibly small product. Again, we'll show it, show it again shortly, but the, what, one of the, the amazing things about it is it's, it's Wi-Fi AC, so the very fastest Wi-Fi around as well. So you've got fast Wi-Fi connection and a tremendously fast, uh, well, the world's fastest broadband connection. But what you can do with that is that you can uh, you can attach ten devices. Could be could be nine mates. Could be all ten devices you've got in your bag. It's your choice. Just in the same way that you manage the um, the tethering on your phone and make sure that only you can access it, or you you keep it open for your friends. The same the same simple simple security elements apply. In addition to that, we've got an app that runs on the on the device itself, so you can manage your usage, manage manage all of your services. So it's a it's a big, big step forward. Welcome back. <laughs> anyway, so it's a, it's it's a it's it's a fantastic device, and that's perfect. But it's, we're still not done with this modem because now, if you're like me, you'll know I carry about four portable chargers in the bag. I've got God knows how many devices. Imagine if you had a MiFi unit that was your internet, but also your charger. Tell us more, James. Well, the thing about the, our, our battery technology um, is developed with a number of things in mind. One, it's they're huge batteries in a very short, very small space. They're de designed to be able to run and run, and they take your usage into days, which is which is very important if you're somebody that's out and about. But what but what you what you tend to find is you don't always need all that power. So what we've developed is a cable that will go with your MiFi unit, or it will go with the new tablets, and you'll be able to charge. Your, your phone from it. So whatever phone you've got, you get the appropriate cable and you'll be able to charge from it. So you, you, uh, your, your phone usage can start to get into the 21st century as well. So there you have it guys. An LTE Cat6 modem that offers 300 megabits per second download speeds, 100 megabits per second upload speeds, connects up to 10 devices and charges your phone. What more do you need? Okay, okay so guys, I just really, really want to thank James for taking the time with us. I know he's a very busy man. And let's be honest, Mobile World Con Congress is absolutely crazy. Having an interview with someone like me, probably not at the top, top of his priority list, but we really want to thank James for t taking the time to sh share with us the a bit more knowledge about the products they've announced and also about what we see coming from Huawei. I couldn't get him to uh, tell us anything else about what's coming next year, but I will keep trying. You know me, don't worry. Real pleasure. I think we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have it ready for you at some point soon. That sounds good. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out the rest of our videos and the MWC portal for all the latest coverage.